Today we'll be learning how to create a button-down collarless shirt from scratch. It's a staple in any man's wardrobe and can either be dressed up or down depending on the occasion. Due to its versatility, it also makes for a perfect gift for your friends and family. If you are keen on learning how to stitch one, this step-by-step -step tutorial is the right place to be. In this video, we will show you how to cut the various pieces required for a shirt from the template, preparing the front piece of the shirt, joining the front and back pieces, finishing the neckline, preparing the sleeves along with the cuff and attaching it to the shirt, finishing the side seams and the bottom hem and finally attaching the buttons. You will need 2 meters of printed fabric with a width of 45 inches, template for the collarless shirt which you can download from our website www.ushaso.com Chalk, beaded pins, scissors, ruler, measuring tape, 1 fourth meter canvas fusing, Usha Janomi buttonhole foot, matching thread, one set of shirt buttons. Step 1. Template marking and cutting. Take any fabric of your choice. Open the fabric completely right side up and fold it in half lengthwise like shown in the video. Then place the back template of the shirt downloaded from www.ushaso.com over the fabric. Keep in mind to place the side that mentions on fold over the fabric fold. Pin it in place with some beaded pins and ensure that the pins go through both the layers of the fabric. Then take a piece of chalk and trace the template in entirety over the fabric. After you are done tracing, unpin the template and keep it aside. Now use a pair of scissors and cut out the traced pattern. Cut slowly and steadily to ensure that the pattern remains intact. Be careful on the curves. Keep the cut piece aside. Now with the remaining fabric, fold it in and place the template titled front over it. Notice that the front template will not be placed on fold as it will have two pieces. Pin the front template in place with some beaded pins. Then use a piece of chalk to trace the material over the fabric. Mind the curved edges. After you are done, Unpin the template and keep it aside. Now with a pair of scissors, cut the traced template. Be extra careful with this step as it can make or break your pattern. After you are done, keep this piece aside as well. Now with the remaining fabric, we will create the sleeves. Fold it in half like shown in the video and place the sleeve template over the fabric. Use beaded pins to pin the template in place so that it remains steady while tracing. Then take a piece of chalk and trace the template in entirety over the fabric. Go slowly and steadily over the curved edges and remember to mark the slit as well. After you are done, unpin the template. Ensure that you put the beaded pins back in their right place to avoid any injuries. Now cut the trace sleeve out of the fabric. Don't forget to cut the slit as well. After you are done, take the remaining fabric. Place the facing template on it as shown followed by the two placket templates. The cuff template will be placed next, but notice that the cuff template mentions on fold. Ensure that you place it over the fabric fold. Now, it's time to pin all these different templates to the fabric. This will ensure that they remain steady while we are tracing them. Next, take a piece of chalk and start by tracing the cuff template over the fabric and then slowly and steadily make your way towards the plackets. Lastly, trace the facing template. 
Unpin the cuff template and repin on the side as we will need two cuff pieces. Trace this as well. Now, slowly unpin all the templates and keep them aside. Take a pair of scissors and cut all the traced pieces out. Start with the cuffs and then move on to the plackets. Be very careful on the curved edges. Finally, cut the facing out of the fabric. Lay them together. All your cut pieces should look like this. Next, take the remaining fabric and a full length ruler. Place the ruler at a 45 degree angle and mark a straight line as shown in the video. From this straight line, measure 1 and 1 fourth inches with a measuring tape and mark it on the fabric. Continue making these marks at regular intervals to help us draw a straight line. Cut on the marked line and our bias strip will be ready. Now take the canvas fusing and fold it in half. Make sure the shiny sides face each other and place the cuff template over it. We have folded into half to cut two pieces of cuffs. Trace it over the fusing. Cut the traced piece out of the fusing carefully. You should have two pieces like this. Great job! We are done with all our cutting. Step 2. Preparing the front two pieces of the shirt. For the next step, take the two front pieces of the shirt and the two facing strips we have cut. The facing strips need to be stitched on the opening of the shirt. To do that, take them to your Usha Janomi Allure DLX sewing machine. Place the facing strip on the wrong side of the right part of the front piece. Align the materials with the edge of the press of foot, right side facing up. But before sewing, ensure that the pattern selector dial is set to A for straight stitch and stitch length is set to 2.5 and begin sewing. Go all the way to the end of the shirt. Don't forget to do a couple of reverse stitches with the help of the reverse stitch selector to secure our stitches in. Once you are done, open the facing strip from the unfinished side and fold it in half on the right side like shown in the video. Now take the fold and place it over the seam line. We will sew over this fold now. Keep folding as you go. Ensure the fold is placed correctly on the seam line while sewing. For a neater finish, cut any excess material and threads. Now take the left side fabric on the front piece. Match the facing strip on the right side of the fabric like shown in the video and sew it in place. Don't forget the reverse stitches at the start and end. After you are done, flip the facing strip open and crease it like shown. Now, turn the fabric and fold the facing strip till the halfway mark and press gently over the fold to crease it. Then fold the entire strip till the seam line as shown. 
We will now sew over the seam line. Align the edge under the presser foot and begin sewing. Make your way towards the end of the fabric and don't forget to do a couple of reverse stitches at the start and at the end. Once you are done, your stitches should look like this. As you can see, the facing on the right piece of the front is on the right side of the fabric and the facing on the left side of the shirt is on the wrong side. Step 3. Joining the front and back pieces by stitching the shoulders and finishing the neckline. Now place the back piece of the shirt over the two front pieces. We will now work on attaching the shoulders and finishing the neck with the bias strip. Take the pieces to your sewing machine. We will work on the shoulders first. Arrange them in a way that the wrong side faces the wrong side and begin sewing. Once done, cut off one eighth of an inch of the seam allowance from the top. Be careful not to cut the stitches. Now open the shirt and gently crease the stitch line with the help of your finger. Now fold like shown in the tutorial. Leave a one fourth inch seam allowance and stitch. We are creating a French seam. Once we are done, open the fabric right side facing you and we'll do an edge stitch over the joining. Align the fabric with the presser foot and begin sewing. Repeat the same process on the other shoulder. Rewatch this step if necessary. Once the shoulder stitching is complete, Working on the neck is the next item on the list. Bring out the bias strip that we cut and fold it in half and align it on the right side of the neckline. At the start, cut off the strip after leaving half an inch for the fold. Fold the extra bit of the strip inwards. Now. Let's stitch the bias strip to the neckline. Align the strip and the fabric under the presser foot and begin sewing. Keep adjusting the bias strip as you go. When you reach the end, fold the extra half inch of the bias strip inwards and stitch over it. Do reverse stitches to secure the stitches. Your final stitches should look like this. As you can see, we have some extra seam allowance at the top. We will cut that. Be very careful to not cut the stitches. Fold the facing strip on the other side after you are done We'll do a round of edge stitches on the pointed section in the video. Begin sewing and make your way to the other end. Post stitching, cut any extra threads for a neater finish. But we aren't done yet. Fold the strip again onto the wrong side like shown in the video and stitch over it. Align it to the edge of the presser foot and begin sewing. Steadily make your way to the other end and we are done. Your final stitches 
should look like this. Cut off any extra threads you see. Go back to the cutting board and as you can see, we've stitched the shoulders and the neckline. Doesn't it look very neat? Step 4. Preparing the sleeves Next, we will work on the sleeves. This will be our right sleeve and this will be the left sleeve. We will work on the left sleeve first. Open the sleeve and place it right side up. The slit is where we will be attaching our placket strips. The small strip of the placket will go on the right side of the fabric. Pin it in place to keep it steady as shown. The longer placket strip will be stitched on the wrong side of the fabric. Match the edges of the longer placket to the sleeves and pin. Let's go stitch the strips to the sleeve piece. First, we will be sewing the shorter placket to the fabric. Remove the pin and begin sewing. Don't forget the reverse stitches. After you are done, flip open the strip and gently crease the seam line. Then turn the fabric around and fold the strip onto the wrong side of the fabric and crease the fold. Now take the fold and place it on the stitch line like shown. Now stitch over this fold. Once we are done, we will work on attaching the other placket to the sleeve. We will repeat the same process on the other sleeve as well. We will attach both the pieces of the placket to the sleeve. Our final stitches should look like this. Next, bring out the iron and let's iron over the attached plackets. Take the longer strip of the placket and flip it open. Do a 1 4 inch fold on the unstitched side and iron over it to maintain the fold. Then, fold the strip so that the folded piece comes over the stitch line. Iron it. Once done, fold the placket from the top by one fourth of an inch, like shown in the video. And again iron over it to maintain the fold. Then fold again from the top and iron it to form the peak of the triangle. After these steps are complete, we'll do tacking stitches on the placket like shown in the video.
Remember to not sew over the slit opening and end your stitches just before you get there. We'll be sewing over the tacking stitches now. When you get to the edges, use the pivot technique to ensure that you have one single stitch throughout. Sew a parallel stitch line at one fourth of an inch distance to complete the box. After you are done, cut out the tacking stitches. Be careful while cutting as we don't want to cut our main stitches. This is how your final stitches should look like. Now we work on attaching the cuff. Take one of your cuff pieces, along with its fusing. Open the cuff piece and place the fusing material on one side and iron it. Place the fusing piece on the reverse side. Once the fusing material is stuck, fold the cuff again in a way that the fusing side faces you. We'll be sewing the vertical edges as shown in the video. Align the edge of the cuff with the presser foot and begin sewing. After you are done, cut the extra seam allowance. Now on the unstitched side, fold one side of the section above the fusing strip like shown in the video and stitch over it. Cut off any extra threads. As you can see, we've stitched one side. Turn the material inside out so the fusing goes inside. Carefully turn the edges out and keep it aside. Next, we will take the sleeve material and fold it in half, right side facing the right side. Pin the open sides. Let's take our pieces to our sewing machine. Match the side seams of the sleeve and align it under the presser foot and begin sewing. We will have to stitch the sleeve seam allowance halfway through. Don't forget reverse stitches. Cut the extra threads. Turn the sleeve inside out. Now comes the most interesting part, attaching the cuff. From the edge of the sleeve, where we have attached the longer placket, take a one and a half inch measurement and mark it. Let's measure the cuff now. As you can see, the cuff is nine and three fourths of an inch inside. Now measure nine and three fourths of an inch on the sleeve opening. From the edge where we have attached the smaller placket to the edge of the longer placket. The point indicated here is nine and three fourths of an inch. Now the remaining portion which comes to about two and one fourth of an inch will go into the pleat. So from the initial marked point, measure two and one fourth of an inch and mark it. Now get the center on the center mark and place the pinched fabric on the third mark. 
just to make sure our measurements are correct. Once again measure the sleeve hem. It should be the exact size of the cuff. Now we will do just a small stitch on the pleat as shown. Insert the stitched sleeve within the cuff and sew it at the top. Keep adjusting the sleeve and the cuff as you sew. Now we'll be sewing all around the cuff. Align the edge of the cuff with the presser foot and begin sewing. Your final stitches should look like this. Repeat the same process to the other sleeve. As you can see, we've attached the placket and the cuffs to the sleeve seamlessly. Even the pleat sits comfortably without sticking out. Step 5. Attach the sleeves finishing the side seams and the bottom hem. Time to attach the sleeves to the shirt armholes. Take the shirt piece and lay it on the drawing board. As you can see, we have to attach the sleeves here. Flip open the shirt like shown. Take the sleeve and fold it in half. At the half mark, create a notch using a pair of scissors. Match this notch to the center of the shirt at the shoulders and pin it in place. Ensure it is right side facing the right side. Proceed to pin the armhole part of the sleeve and the shirt together. The same process will be repeated on the other side. Flip open the shirt and mark the center on the sleeve. Proceed to then pin the sleeve and the shirt piece together. After working on the sleeve, we'll be matching the sides and working on the side seams of the shirt. Take your pinned shirt pieces to your Usha Janomi Allure DLX machine. Align the armhole of the sleeve with the presser foot and begin sewing. We'll be removing the pins as we make our way to the other side. As you can see, we've stitched the sleeve to the shirt. Repeat the same process on the other side. Once done, we'll start sewing the side seams. Match the sleeves together. Continue sewing from the midpoint of the sleeve till the hem. Keep adjusting the fabric as you go. Do the same on the other side as well. As you can see, we've finished sewing the side seams, but we aren't done yet. We'll sew the side seams again, but this time with zigzag stitches. Set the pattern selector dial to C and stitch length dial to 1.5. Begin sewing. These stitches will help give our shirt a neater finish and avoid fraying of the edges. See how clean they look? Next on the list is hemming the button of the shirt. For that, fold the bottom of the shirt by one fourth of an inch twice. We will be sewing over this fold. Don't forget to reset the pattern selector dial to A for straight stitches and stitch length dial to 2.5. Start sewing and keep folding as you go. Be extra careful while sewing over the seam lines. 
go all the way across. Your final stitches should look like this. Just to recap, we've attached the sleeves to the shirt, stitched the side seams and hemmed the bottom. Step 6. Attaching the buttons. We are almost done with the shirt. Only finishing touches to go. Turn the shirt inside out. We'll be creating the buttonholes on the left side and attaching the buttons on the right. Place the first button at the bottom of the neck facing around 1 inch away from the neck and mark it. Make sure the button is placed on the center of the strip. From there measure 3.5 inches and create a second mark. Continue doing this till you reach the end. Create markings on the other side as well for the buttonholes. One inch from the neck will be the first mark and subsequently mark every three and a half inches. For the sleeves, we will first need to take the center of the cuff. The cuff is two and a half inches in size and hence the center will be one and one fourth of an inch. Mark this point. Now from the open edge of the cuff, mark 1 inch on the inside. This marking will be the position for the first button. The second button will be placed at approximately 1 fourth of an inch from the cuff opening. Mark this point as well. This is how the buttons will look. For the buttonhole and the cuff, Mark the center point of the cuff which is 1 and 1 fourth of an inch on the other side of the cuff. Again from the cuff opening, measure 1 inch and mark. This will be the position for the buttonhole. Next, take the center of the stitched placket on both sides and create a marking for the button and the buttonhole at 2 inches from the cuff. The exact same procedure will be repeated on the other sleeve as well. Once you've done all your markings, take your shirt to your sewing machine. For the next step, replace the regular presser foot with the buttonhole foot. Don't forget to remove the accessory box and lower the feed dog position. Reattach the accessory box and we are ready to attach the buttons. Don't forget to set the pattern selector dial to C for zigzag stitches and stitch length dial between 0 and 1. Align the area where you want to add a button to the foot and see the magic happen. Attaching buttons is that simple with your Usha Janomi Allure DLX sewing machine. Creating buttonholes are simpler. Remove the accessory box and raise the feed dog position. Align the point under the foot and set the machine for buttonhole stitching. For a more detailed video on button and buttonhole stitching, watch the video on buttonhole fixing on your website www.ushaso.com Once the hole is stitched, use a seam ripper to create the hole. That's it! Repeat the steps for all the buttons. Voila! Your shirt is ready. Gone are the days where you needed separate machines and professionals to do all this. Doesn't our shirt look absolutely stylish? Share photos of your creations in the comments below.